Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob. Bidolf, this is the brand new Draw with Rob in space activity book. Have you seen that yet? Oh, I've got to show you this because that is, okay, that's me. That's a photo of me in my studio, but look. On the the other new Draw With Raw book, my first Draw With Raw Dinosaurs, I appear oh. in illustrated form, looking considerably younger than I do in real life. And there I am with Ringo. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I showed you that really, but I'm a children's author and illustrator. You might have seen my picture books. I've written lots of picture books, including this one, which is called The Blue Footed Booby, which came out last year at the time of recording um, or you might have seen my chapter books now I have written a series of chapter books all about this character here Peanut Jones that's the first one Peanut Jones in the Illustrated City that one is the second one Peanut Jones and the 12 portals and that one are they all in shot hang on let me get it in there we go and that one they fit perfectly don't they it's almost like it, this was designed to be like this uh, and the third one it's called Peanut Jones and the End of the Rainbow. And that one is not quite out at the time of recording yet, but it's brand, so it's brand, I've only just finished it. I've only just got, I think I've got like one copy of it, um, but that's out very, very soon. And I'm super proud of these books. As you can see, I'll just open up the middle one. They're very, 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 look at that illustration. Even I'm quite impressed by that. It took me ages to illustrate these books. Uh, I don't want to go too far back in that because there's some big spoilers in there. But look, if you like really fun books with lots of adventure, and these are very art-based, these books, so I'm assuming you guys like art because you're watching a Draw With Rob video, I think you'll really, really like these stories. So check them out. But we are here today to draw um, a character, sort of a character, more like a kind of an extra in my latest picture book, which is out very, very soon. At the time of recording, I think it's out like next week. And that book is called Gigantic. I'm so, so proud of this book. It's all about this whale here, whose name is Gigantic. Now this whale is a blue whale. As we all know, blue whales, the largest animals on earth. But this particular blue whale, isn't very large. That's just how he was born. He was born quite small, but his name is Gigantic. So the parents give the whales these huge names like Gigantic and Colossus and Hulk and Titan, things like that. Um, but in the course of this story, with the help of Gigantic's friend Myrtle, the turtle there, we learn that, you know what? It doesn't matter how tall you are. What really counts is the size of your heart. And so I've shown you guys how to draw Gigantic and Myrtle already. And so today I thought I'd show you how to draw a different kind of whale. Now, let's have a look in the book. Look at these drawings. I'm so pleased with these. It's such a nice color palette in this, in this book. I'm really, really happy with it. But I'm gonna go right to the last page, which sort of is a, isn't really, it's sort of a spoiler, but it's not really a spoiler. And as you can see, I have filled the sea, filled the ocean with lots and lots of um, sea creatures, big and small. And today, I am going to be showing you how to draw one of these, these white whales here. They are called beluga whales. And honestly, they are the most beautiful creatures you have ever seen. So I thought I would show you how to draw a little cute beluga whale. I just knocked my little stand there wobbling around, so making you feel seasick, which is appropriate, seeing as we are drawing sea creatures. And do you know what guys? I am super excited because this video today is brought to you in conjunction with my friends at Whale and Dolphin Conservation, the WDC. Now, who are the WDC? Well, I will tell you, they're the leading global charity dedicated solely to the conservation and protection of whales, dolphins, and porpoises. And do you know what they do? Well, they're basically working. The idea, the dream, the dream is to create a world where every single whale, dolphin and porpoise can live safely and free in the ocean. Okay, so a really, really amazing charity. I'm super, super stoked that they are supporting this video today. Um, and if you go to their website, which is here, uh, uk.wales.org and go to the kids zone, Here's the full address with the kids own link there. Um, you can learn, learn much more about whales and dolphins. And you know what? You can even become 
a dolphin defender. So go and check it out, gang. Right. We're going to draw a little beluga whale. Now, what you're going to need today, you're going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need pens, something to draw with. You're going to need something to colour with a bit later. But there's another, there's another item which we're going to use today, which I've never used before in one of these videos. And that item is some tape. <laughs> Now this is masking tape, which is a bit more papery than kind of tape. So if you've got some of that, that would be ideal, because I'm going to show you a little technique which you've never really, never really used before, but it's really effective. If you haven't got any tape, you don't need to do this. This is just a little added bonus. You don't need to do this at all, but it's a little fun detail that we might be able to add later on. Right, draw with Rob then. So. If you haven't watched one of these videos before, I'd better explain how they work. Now, the reason I started doing these, well, I started doing them back in lockdown, a few years ago now, um, because there was lots of people stuck at home looking for things to do, and I thought, well, I can keep you busy by doing some drawings. Um, but I was doing these draw-alongs long before lockdown. I was doing them in my, in my live shows, and people would always, at the beginning of my live shows, I'd always say, right, hands up, who doesn't think they're very good at drawing? All these hands would go up. And I would say, well, that's nonsense. Everybody can draw. Who's, you know, well, who's to say what's good and what's it's bad with drawing you know there's no right or wrong answer is there with art but I do I do concede that some people might need a little bit of help with the order that we do a drawing in right and that's where I come in because I am going to show you what, what we're going to do I'm going to break this drawing of a beluga whale down into little bite-sized pieces okay so I'm going to draw a little bit on my piece of paper here then you can pause the video and you're going to draw what I draw start me up again I will draw a little bit more then you draw, then I draw, then you draw, then I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And at the end, we're going to have an amazingly lovely picture of a beluga whale. Right, so I've got my pen. We're ready to begin. Now, the first thing that I want you guys to do, we're going to draw our whale. We're going to draw a fairly small drawing of a whale in the middle of our picture here. So I would say, let's say about right in the centre. Let's go for right in the centre of your piece of paper. I want you to draw a small kind of U shape, really thin U shape, slightly leaning over like that. Let's get my paper in the middle of the screen. There we go. Okay, so a nice, easy start. The next thing I want you to do, coming out to the right of that U shape, we're gonna draw kind of horizontal line, actually slightly curved, just like that. Can you see a very slight curve to my horizontal line? And then what I want you, what I want you to do is imagine that that line is going through that U shape and coming out the other side like that. But can you see it? So the whole thing is a very slight curve like that. Okay. Nice, easy start. The next thing I want you to do about halfway along this, this side of the curve, I want you to start coming up. Now I'm not going dead vertically. I'm going slightly at a diagonal like that. Then what we're going to do we're going to curve around in a lovely, almost as if we're drawing a kind of circle. We're going to curve around, all the way around, and we're going to go in about there. So if you imagine that's a circle on the top, we've done like a straight line and half of a circle, semicircle, kind of. <laughs> I'm not being very articulate today. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't think I slept very well last night. It's very hot at the moment. Are you finding it tough to sleep in this heat? I don't like the heat at night time. Can't sleep very well. Makes me inarticulate in my Draw With Rob videos. <laughs> right, the next thing to do from the end of this curve, we are gonna head slightly uphill. Just a very, very small line, slightly uphill. And then from the end of that line, we're gonna curve back around like so. Then, from the end of that line, we're going to go straight down into our curve, like that. Okay, now you're probably wondering what on earth I'm doing. Don't you worry, all will become clear. The next thing I want you to do, in the middle of this little kind of nodule sticking out, we're going to draw a line, but we're going to sort of go up and down a little bit. So you can see that, up and down. 
and then let's carry it on around here curve it around like so now hopefully you're beginning to see our little beluga whale take shape i'm going to tell you what each bit is now so that first thing we drew is going to be our whale's fin this curve here is going to be the surface of the water because what we are drawing our little beluga whale is bobbing up above the surface of the water sticking its little head above the water so this is our beluga whale's head now beluga whales are very very they have very distinctive heads right they have this kind of it's a slightly funny shape kind of bulbous forehead and do you know what that bulbous forehead is called the melon <laughs> which is a great name because I guess it looks a bit like a melon right so this is called the melon and this is fascinating to me and I don't know the purpose of it but they can change the shape of their melon I don't know how, I think it's through their sinuses I think they blow air because you know whales are mammals right they breathe the air that's why they come up above the surface they can blow the air around their sinuses and it changes the shape of their melon I don't know the purpose of that but you know what it's a pretty cool superpower right so <laughs> this is our whale's melon this little bit here is the sort of the snout the beginning the sort of where the mouth is and this is our nice smiley mouth of our beluga whale now then let's give our beluga whale some eyes do you know what i'm going to change to my little fin pen here and i'm just going to add the eyes we're just going to add little dots for the eyes one there sort of in the in the sort of the curl of the mouth and then we'll put the other one over here so we do eyes in these videos do eyes in lots of different ways um, sometimes we do them with a with a round circle with a dot in the middle so we get a nice big um, uh, white though you can see the whites of the eyes with the pupils in it but sometimes we just do them like this just as a little dot and I think sometimes this even though it's much more simple it actually adds more character sometimes oh speaking of characters Ringo just let out a kind of sleepy sigh did you hear that I don't know if the microphone will have picked that up but Ringo is behind me he's currently asleep but at any given moment he might start barking at uh, the cat my cat cat face tends to walk up and down the garden so if you hear Ringo barking I apologize in advance <laughs> so there we go there's our beluga whale's eyes let's give our beluga whale some eyebrows we're gonna put them right up here now full disclosure Beluga whales do not have eyebrows. <laughs> but we are drawing a cartoon character, right? And eyebrows, as you guys know, as I always talk about, eyebrows are um, are the key thing when you want to convey kind of emotion in your character, right? Down in the middle means angry. Up in the middle can mean sort of worried sometimes. But when you put them a long way above the eyes like this, it just makes your character look happy. That's what I think. So there we go. So there's our beluga whale. Now, I'm gonna draw the other fin of our beluga whale because I thought it would be nice if our whale is waving to us. So we're gonna draw a similar shape to that, but it's gonna be going up and out from there. And there we go. Cute! Our little whale is waving to us. And that's because beluga whales are very, very social animals right they live in extremely large pods sometimes they even switch pods throughout their lives so they mix friendship groups because they just want to make friends with everyone so they're very very sociable and friendly um so that's why i've done our little beluga whale waving now as i said this whale is poking its little head above the surface of the water so we're now going to make this line here we're going to add a bit to this line here what we're going to do we're going to add a sort of curvy bit around the end like that and we're going to do the same around this end and you know what I'm just going to turn that line in a bit there then what we do we add another line there uh, this one will add another sort of curvy line there and even carry that on down there and I'm sort of you can see I'm not I'm sort of breaking up these lines a bit I'm adding lots of little lines and what that does it creates a sort of rippling effect can you see what i mean so it's like this whale has poked up out of the water and created these whipple ripples not whipples ripples around him or her as they come out of the water now this next bit is is very interesting because what i want to do well i'll tell you what we do remember i said we need this mask masking tape here 
what I'm gonna do, we're gonna, cause the, cause the blue goel is white, right? So there's not really any color, so we can't do any coloring in. So what I thought would be nice is if we colored in around our, our blue goel, okay? So we're gonna color a nice blue colors around our blue goel. We might do sort of sky color at the top and then a bit of sea color below. So what I want to do is I'm gonna make a frame with this tape around my beluga whale. So what you do, if you've got some masking tape, I want you to tear off an end, a uh, length like that. And now this is a little, little trick, right? It's a very, very good trick. What I want you to do is just fold the ends of your tape over like that. And the reason that we're doing that is because when we stick this down, we don't want it, we want to be able to peel it off nice and easily. So if you do that at the end, it means the end doesn't stick down, which means you can lift it up and peel it off easily. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna stick our first bit at the top like that. I'm gonna use the edge of the paper to make sure I get this square, like so. So we're gonna stick that down and I'm just gonna press that end. I don't want it to stick too much to the paper because we don't want it to tear off paper when we lift it up at the end. So I'm just gonna stick down the end nearest to the whale, right? And now I'm gonna do the same at the bottom and the sides. I'm gonna go into super speed mode for this, but you don't need to see it, but that is what I'm gonna do for everything. I'm gonna do that foldy over thing, okay? So I'll see you back here in a few seconds. Okay, three, two, one, let's go. Okay, there is my frame done. You might have seen in the video, it's going very fast, I know, but you might have seen that I just used this little postcard, my how to paint a penguin postcard, um, to get the right angle. Okay, so what I did, I balanced, I put one edge up against that top bit, which was level with the paper, and then I used the other side just to make sure I get a nice square frame. So you can see, I framed my little picture of the blue whale poking his or her head up very, very nicely. Now. I'm going to draw, now, the, oh, first of all, I'll tell you what, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add the surface of the sea. Now, the sea, we're gonna do kind of up here. So what I want you to do, sort of middle of the head, we're just gonna draw a slightly kind of wavy line, going through the head and out the other side, like so, okay? That's gonna be the surface of our sea. So above that is sky, below that is sea. And what I want to do, I'm just to, let me have a little think about this. Hmm, interesting. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take, so I'm gonna color in my C, I'm gonna color it in blue in a bit. So I'm gonna take a dark blue pencil. Here we go. Let me just sharpen this pencil. Got a nice little pencil sharpener here. Wow, we are really going behind the scenes today in this video, aren't we? We're doing pencil sharpening, we're putting tape on. There we go, look at that. Oh, got a bit of, there we go. We got a lovely sharp blue pencil. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna carry on drawing my beluga whale's body beneath the surface of the sea. But because that bit is kind of, we're gonna be viewing it through the sea, I'm just gonna be doing the edge in a blue pencil here. And you'll see why in a little while. So what I want you to do, this line coming down here, we're gonna carry that on in our blue pencil. Don't worry if you don't have a blue pencil, you can just draw this with your regular pencil. But we're gonna curve around like so okay then we're going to carry on this line down we're going to come down just past that fin and we're going to curve that around like so okay and now we're going to add our beluga's tail so what we do we kind of turn 90 degrees from that line and we draw a line straight up like that i want you to then imagine that line going through to the other side and carrying on down like that then let's do this bottom one first. We're gonna go round in a nice curve and along a little bit. So it's like a J shape, kind of. Then we're gonna turn around, right angles. Then we're gonna go straight back up here. And when we get to kind of the midpoint of our beluga's body, we're just gonna dip in, like so. Then do you know what? We're gonna draw a mirror image up on that side. So let's start down here. We're gonna do the dip in first and go along. Try and get that length, same as that length. Then we're gonna go out, around, up, curve. And there we go. We have drawn our beluga's tail. 
under the water. This is a very cute beluga, I think. Now, it's time, so basically that's the outline. It's very simple drawing this. So the outline really consisted of the, the part above the water with some ripply bits, and then the below part, sort of thinner and paler. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna color in the sea. Now this is where these, these tape bits really come into their own, because I'm just gonna color in over the tape like that. And see what that does, it's called masking tape because it is masking off this parts of the paper underneath it. So when I draw like that, we're gonna end up with this lovely clean line. When we take the tape off, we're gonna have this lovely straight clean line. And it's a really effective way of framing your drawings. And you can do this for any of your drawings. So it's just a really nice technique just to have in the bag. So I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna color in the sea. I'm gonna color in the sky. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with the, with the beluga whale's body, the part that's under the water, okay? So I'll see you back here in 20 seconds or so with a colored in picture. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so we have finished coloring our beluga whale. Now I've got a, lot, got a lot to tell you about with this. So I'll tell you what I did. Well, hopefully you can see what I was trying to do now when I did that, when I did the kind of the part of the beluga whale's body that's below the surface of the water. So I just used that blue outline so I could then color everything blue around it. But can you see I've made it darker blue around the body and a lighter blue where, um, where the beluga's body is. And that's because as we know, the beluga's have very white bodies. And so if you saw it beneath the surface of the water, it'd be kind of a paler blue than the rest of the water. So that's what I've done. Um, I left, so some, around some of the ripples, cause the water would be kind of rippling on the surface like that, it would catch the light. So I left some more, more lighter bits around the ripples. And then the bit of the body that's directly under the surface, I've just made it slightly darker at the top, which creates this feeling of depth and makes it look like you're underneath the waters surface and another thing that does that so i don't know if you noticed but i picked up my watercolors towards the end of coloring and i just mixed some dark blue and i just did those kind of little wave things over the top of my colored pencil and importantly some of those waves go over the top of our beluga whale's body below the surface of the water as well and that again creates this illusion of depth and of uh, the whale, uh, the whale's body being um, underneath the water surface because there's a bit of the surface kind of on top. So it just works really, really well. In terms of the actual whale itself, I do this quite often. Whenever you're doing something white, if you do the high, uh, the sort of the shadows, not the highlights, the shadows in a sort of paley bluey green, it really makes that white look kind of fresh and clean, which is what I wanted. And I added a very slight bit of pale blue around there with a little kind of circle taken out of it, just again to kind of create this illusion of depth. And in terms of the sky, just a couple of little clouds in there. Now, this is a bit nerve wracking, this bit, because I'm gonna peel the tape off now and you're gonna see the effect that we've created by using this tape frame. But there is a danger here and you have to be very careful. You know I use this paper, this watercolor paper, lovely thick watercolor paper that has a bit of a grain to it. So sometimes when you peel tape off, you can take a bit of the surface of the paper off. So I'm gonna do it very, very carefully. Remember we folded over the edge of our tape just so that we can easily grip it like that. And then what I'm gonna do, really, really slowly, I'm gonna peel it off. Can you see how slowly I'm going? Because I really don't wanna take any of the paper's surface off. It's quite nerve wracking. I keep changing my grip on the tape, so I'm holding it near to where the tape joins the paper. Because if I, if I pull it from here, the kind of you don't have as much kind of control and feel over it. Now, do you remember I didn't stick the tape down the whole way across? I just really pressed down right on this edge because that's really the bit we needed to stick to the paper. Well, this is all right so far. I didn't want to talk too soon. I don't want to jinx it. But actually, this is not looking too bad. And when I get to here, 
I'm going to go from the other end. I'm going to pick up my other end and just meet in the middle there. And there we go. Perfect. So can you see we have this lovely straight edge of the frame. Now I'm going to take the rest of the tape off now. As I'm doing it quite slowly I will go into super speed mode so you don't have to watch me do it. So I'll see you again in a few seconds hopefully with a nice clean frame around my picture. Here we go. Okay that went pretty well. Pretty clean. A very 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 slight. Can you just see? Very slight kind of tear began there but I just peeled the tape the other way and I managed to stop it so that's actually not too bad at all and you know what it's not a perfect frame there's little bits that have kind of broken out here and there but I just think that kind of adds to it and what I really like is where the clouds where I've left them white they just kind of kind of fade out at the side of the frame it just really really works well it's a really really nice technique I think to make lovely art um, so what do you think I really like this um, little beluga whale, um, especially now the whales. I'm going to give you some whales facts now. Is that all right? We're going to finish with some whales facts. These have been sent over to me by my friends at WDC. Now whales are amazing, amazing for the climate. Did you know that? They are real kind of climate change heroes because what they do, they help absorb carbon. Now carbon, obviously, that we, we want to keep the planet healthy, right? So if they absorb some of the carbon, it stops it going into the environment, which helps to regulate the climate. Okay, so that's one pretty cool thing, right? But also, listen to this, when they poo, so <laughs> when whales poo, I'm sorry if you're eating your breakfast or something at the moment, but I'm sorry, this is a necessary, necessary fact to tell you. When they poo, uh, that those poos, <laughs> they provide nutrients to loads and loads of the teeny tiny marine plants uh, uh, and things that live in the sea. They really, really help them. They provide them with their nutrients, these things called phytoplanktons. And these, in turn, that helps kind of release more oxygen into the air, which is amazing. And did you know, like, about half of all of the oxygen that the planet produces comes from the ocean, which is pretty cool, isn't it? And even when whales die, they keep on doing good stuff because they help their bodies. They help provide, not only provide food um, for lots and lots of deep sea species, but also a habitat. So sometimes you see, don't you, those underwater videos of whale carcasses, which ha which are basically, they home loads and loads of really small deep sea um, species when they fall to the bottom of the ocean. And when they do this, this also helps to lock away some of the carbon uh, that they contain so that it can't be released back to the atmosphere. So they are pretty, pretty amazing um, creatures, whales. And did you know beluga whales in particular? So there's about 300 uh, belugas that are currently held in captivity uh, in marine parks and aquariums and things like that around the world in at least 10 different countries, which we don't like. Okay, these are big animals. We do not, they should not be held in small tanks in, in marine parks and theme parks and things like that. But WDC have done an amazing thing. They've helped to create the world's first beluga whale sanctuary which is called the Sea Life Trust Sanctuary and it's in Iceland and there's two there's basically there's two captive uh two previously captive beluga whales called little grey and little white and it's given them a bigger and much safer place to live than the place that they were previously in because they need to be you can't just chuck them straight back into the sea they kind of need to adapt to it so this whale sanctuary is a really really amazing thing that WDC have done so listen there's one more thing we have to do to our video, isn't there? I almost forgot, but I didn't. Of course we need to sign. Did I say video? I meant picture. Of course we need to sign our picture, don't we? So, do you know what? I'm gonna do the full signature today. Rob, get off. There we go. So make sure you sign your picture so that everybody knows who has created this wonderful framed work of art. Now, I hope you've enjoyed drawing this with me. I really want to see your pictures. This is how I get to see your pictures. Get someone to take a picture of it. And then if they post it on social media using this hashtag, draw with Rob, that's probably the best way that I'll get to see it. If you are watching on Facebook, you can just comment below with a picture of your drawing. That way I'll get to see it too. And I love, love to see them. So do make sure you send, send your drawings in to me. 
Um, what else can I tell you? Right, you need to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Uh, uh, that way you will get a little notif notification telling you when a new video is coming out, or has come out, which is really cool. Uh, also, why don't you subscribe to my free newsletter via my website? Sign up for it here with an email address. I will not spam you, there will not be ads, but what you will get is an email when new stuff is happening. So when there's a new Draw With Rob video, when I, there's a new book coming out, when I'm on tour, I might be coming near you, in which case you can bring your drawings to show me in real life and I'll sign them for you and that kind of thing, which is super fun. Um, and what else can I tell you? Oh yes, if you hang around to the end of this video, uh, I will show you inside the Draw With Rob space book. I looked around for it, but I couldn't find it. So hang around to the end of the video and you have a bit of a closer look inside and don't forget guys check out my brand new book gigantic see if you can spot the beluga whale in there big fun for little friends i'm very proud of it it's been a real pleasure showing you how to draw uh, this beluga whale today i hope you've had fun i certainly have i'm going to be back very soon with another episode of draw with rob in the meantime everybody keep those pencils sharpened keep on reading and take care bye bye everyone it's Rob here I hope you enjoyed your draw with Rob video I'm just popping up here again at the end I've got Ringo with me as you can see he's having a bit of a nap at the moment um, but I just popped up here to tell you about my brand new draw with Rob activity book and this is it it's called draw with Rob in space and out of this world art activity book and I think you're really gonna like this one so what's inside it well we have um, lots of puzzles uh, like these ones. We have some bits where I've started off the drawing and you guys have to finish the drawing off. I really like this one. It shows the cockpit of a spaceship and you have to add the controls. We have some crafting ideas for you. There's even a card game in there too. And of course, plenty of our usual draw alongs like these guys. And of course, once you've done your draw alongs, you, you draw them in the little frame that I have made next to the instructions. And then can you see here, look, the pages, you probably can't see, but the pages are perforated down that side. So once you've done your drawing here, you just tear the page out, stick it up on the fridge, ready to display. And then once you've finished the entire book, once you've been through the whole activity book, you've got a nice certificate, you know. This is to certify that your name is officially a space superstar. So lots and lots of interstellar entertainment for you to keep you occupied when you're not watching a Draw With Rob video. The book is available now um, from wherever you get your books. Try and support your local bookshop if you can. Um, and if you get it and you enjoy it, please let me know and send me lots of your pictures. I love to see your pictures. Right, that's it, I'm done. You can get on with the rest of your day now. I will see you very soon for another episode Draw with Rob. Bye everyone.